Today is a milestone day for me when it comes to Rust-based design. See, I once made a little solo vase called the Temple, which turned out to be quite popular because for the price it was incredibly resilient. But what if I told you that for about the same cost you can get so much more? Introducing the Throne. Spacious, full-featured and even stronger against offline raids. This is, by far, the best, most meticulously designed solo base I've ever created. So today we're gonna build it together. And then we're gonna go one step further and add a beautifully sleek funnel wall compound with six fully splash separated rooms for storage and utility, three funnel wall style entrances, and of course, vicious shotgun trap placement and protected turrets. Now with or without the optional funnel wall, you still get a full 360 wide gap shooting floor, which also includes roof peaks, raid defense bedrooms, a beautifully clean turret protected roof, and even a minicopter garage. Now the base core is pretty spacious and includes a few secret bunkers you'll see in the build guide itself and the main TC bunker brings Trixie Hobbitses to a whole new level. And on top of that you get three external TCs which themselves are loot bunkers with great storage. The value and utility you get from this base at this cost is unparalleled. But to get there, well let's just say there are many building tricks involved. This is quite a technical base, so I highly suggest you practice it on a build server before building it in wipe. And so, let's build! We start by creating the now legendary pixel gap. So place two square foundations, jump on this one, and yes jumping is important. Now crouch and place a triangle foundation. Still crouched, strafe over and clip a second triangle as deeply as possible into the first. Great, now wiggle this around a bit and if it stays blue like that you're good. So technically speaking, we now have two foundations, one ever so slightly higher than the other, and that'll come into play in a major way. So upgrade both and set up a TC compartment on the right. Now the TC itself you want to place as far to the left as you can, and then close a tiny starter base like so. Well done! Now before this foundation decays, you want to attach another one deliberately to it, like so. Then one here, deliberately to the wall side. And make absolutely sure you have these large stone textures at these positions before upgrading. You can now close it up, always deliberately placing triangle floors from the outside in, like so. Now if you don't know why we do this, go watch this video immediately. Otherwise, after upgrading these two, add a double door here. And then two walls here to form the roof exit. Perfect, now you want to drop off here and add honeycomb like so. And when done, go back up and close a little triangle for the second floor loot room. I like setting it up this way. And note that this here is wood. And that's because if you want to fit a tier 3 here, well, can't be done unless you soft side it first. And once the tier 3 is placed, you can of course replace the shelf. That said, uh, you might want to close this all off first. and then make yourself a roof exit like so.
and as soon as you get a ladder, you can get rid of whatever temporary jump ups you have set up and make yourself a proper entrance right here. Start by upgrading these two, then add honeycomb like so, and that's the ground floor entrance done. Now there's absolutely no need to remind you to always place those triangles outside in. Stone texture on the top right. So I won't mention it again. But but do it like this, okay? Just. And now we're at the uh, ugly duckling stage of the build, so let's fix that. First add walls here. Also adding the now legendary outside in triangles. Then you drop off this side. Upgrade the left wall and honeycomb. And now with a much nicer looking footprint, you can go ahead and close the third floor in. And I take care to always show exactly how to place the triangle tiles, not because I have trust issues, but because I have trust issues. Now when you get here, you do this, and here you make a roof exit with the door oriented the same way as the ground entrance. Looking good! And so the time of interior design is upon us. First things first, wall goes here, hard side towards us like so. Then complete the chute here and add a door for an immediate bumping security. Good, now we come to this alcove over here where first you upgrade the floor, then place a locker exactly this way, and now you go here, and you might need to stand inside the corner for this to work, though it, it should work anyway, and what you do is you carry these triangle frames all the way back to the locker. Then top first, bottom second, and this boys and girls is a pixel gap bunker. I can prove it. Just place a small box and then kind of slide off of it while holding W towards the wall and uh, there, see? Now you can upgrade this to metal but not HQM or it stops working. And if you own the cargo container skin, you can actually side grade the bottom half wall and seal the gap against potential griefing. Of course you can't loot it in that state but you can always revert. Good, good! Okay, now here you add a wall, soft side towards you, and here you do a crossfade edit. <laughs> nah, no, just kidding. Here's a crossfade edit. Ah, uh, soothing. Anyway, now you go here, upgrade this wall, and rotate. Here we'll add another easy bake loot room, fill the main corridor with garage doors, and now that the first stage of the build is complete and we have this cheap and comfy little base, our first priority is to add external TCs, thereby claiming our build spot and protecting ourselves against griefing. So follow me to stage 2 of the build where we'll do just that. Alright, now before committing to somewhat expensive base upgrades, although you could do some of those first, we shall add three mini bunker external TCs, giving us cheap bunkered storage, grief protection and area control. And so, from each of these single wall sides, build out three twig squares, remove the first two, and replace with this Pac-Man shape. Beautiful! Then turning around, add three more squares and cap with a metal triangle. Still beautiful! And on this very triangle, we'll establish our external TC mini bunker. So start with two half walls facing the base, wall here, and the TC goes back against the half walls. From here you add a twig foundation and a metal wall which can go on either side. At the opening add a twig square, and then build nine triangles out like so. Then add a square here, Remove all excess twiggies, including that one, and build back with squares. Now when you come to place a triangle here, look sideways like so, and place. 
Now make sure you have this stone texture at the bottom left here before upgrading. And then repeat the process, building out 9 triangles. Then a square, remove excess twiggage. And then go back with squares, making sure to attach the last one deliberately to the twig side like so. Then from here, outside the bunker, add two half walls. And a triangle like so. Now although the bunker works just fine without it, I usually add a simple wooden doorway here for safety. Though to actually place the doorway, you'll have to make a frame here. Then place. And remove. Now these babies got plenty of storage to keep you safe from those offliners thrice accursed and unto their children's children. And to close them up, just uh, jump. Um, just uh, make sure stability is 11% or less before you upgrade, okay? Now to open them, just place a roof here and... Magic. Alright, now if terrain permits it, you'll want to turn these into disconnectable TCs. So remove these, triangle foundation here, and a frame. Then you add this for stability, just so you can connect back like so. And that's your disconnection mechanism done. Now if your main TC ever gets destroyed, break the connection like so. Then replace your main TC, and reconnect. Alright, now let's do this part. Here you place a shop front, and then you board up the window with medium signs. Which is a funny way I discovered to make a, well, non-soft side metal wall, essentially. And once you get a turret, place it here. Now, if you want the absolute cheapest solo option without the funnel wall compound, you just do this. Double door, double door, then a tiny little airlock here. And when all's said and done, for only this upkeep, you get a beautiful solo base, multiple bunkers, full shooting floor, the works. Now combine these guys and you also get a kill zone compound you can operate from your phone. Disgusting. And that's the basic version of the base. It's good, but if you want to have the coolest solo base on the server, funnel wall compound and everything, instead of this, you do this. Which, actually, you can also expand to this from the smaller version, so you can always add the funnel wall compound if you feel like it. And now, with external TCs, safe from low effort griefing and having gained three metal bunkers to squirrel our loot away in, stage two of the build comes to a close. And in stage three, we shall once more turn our attention towards the base core, upgrading and turning it into an absolute tank. So, core upgrades. And of course, you can make some or all of these upgrades earlier in the build if you want to. Especially this first one. So, as previously stipulated, make sure the TC is positioned leftmost on its foundation and not too deep set. It doesn't have to be super precise, but still, this here is perfect. So first you armor the TC compartment. Good. Then you go all the way over here where you place down this half wall. Oh, and if what we're about to do doesn't work, try placing it from this side. But it should usually be fine, so place. And then carry frames back to the TC like so. Then top first, bottom second, and you are now the proud owner of a pixel-gapped TC. Of course, I don't want any tragedy on my hands, so please do check it's actually there before you upgrade. Perfect. Now again I remind you. Don't HQM. If you want a method that does work with HQM, check out this video. But keep in mind the HQM gap cannot be sealed against griefing. Okay? Okay. So now you go back here and place this metal frame. And you upgrade this compartment before walling it off. This way, if your pixel gap ever gets broken, you can use the embedded frame to fix it. Always gotta be thinking about these things, you know? Continue by upgrading this compartment as well. 
And now we're gonna do something uh, not for the faint of heart, and probably doesn't work on console, but I just really want to show this trick, so um, yeah. So place a door frame here, then get a vending machine and make sure it's oriented this way, not this way, this way, very important. Now try to place it such that it seals the door frame and completely covers the inner foundation, just like that. No gaps whatsoever, perfect. Now here's the funny thing. Rotate, and there's the gap. Rotate back, sealed. Only works when it's empty, by the way. Now you place a smart alarm here, and here you may run into an issue where you don't have the pointer precision to access the gap. The vending machine gets in the way. So what you do is, you press F1 to open the console, then you enter the command look at radius 0.01 and that basically upgrades your pointer precision such that you can not only access the TC but also the bottom half wall for side grade grief proofing. There goes one happy TC, I can tell you that. And as for the rest of the base, you want to upgrade every single foundation, floor and wall within reach. Optionally, here in the second floor loot room, you could HQM the ceilings and even add garage doors as a kind of inner honeycomb. On the outside, you want to upgrade the entire core, except for the entrance chute and the roof exit. Now one last but very important upgrade. From the front door you go here, and this is actually a weak point in the base. So you could honeycomb it. But in this case I'd rather just upgrade. And so this is where we are at the end of stage 3. And in stage 4 of the build we'll be adding shooting floors, bunkers, bedrooms, a minicopter garage and much much more, well no actually that's it. Ok, let's start on the shooting floor. First add some support frames like so, then these platforms, and those platforms, then come window frames, and that's about the shape of it. Now let's do some more tricksy shenanigans. So go here and upgrade this, then upgrade that and rotate, and continue creating a little compartment where you place a locker precisely like so. Then from here you carry triangle frames all the way back. Top half wall first, bottom second. And nobody's impressed anymore. Well, may as well do the rotating vending machine again. Just remember to completely cover the inner foundation, just like that. Nice! Now here you add an airlock to the chute, then you upgrade this wall here, and here you can do a battery compartment, another pixel gap, you do you. And then we come to, well my favorite part actually, the bedroom modules I use in almost every design. So first we start with the support structure for the bedrooms. This here is the roof peak, and here comes the actual bedroom. Turret goes here with a single door behind it, then a standard two door airlock on the left, then a locker and bed. And here I like doing my impassable window trick, which goes like this. Cool, huh? Just make sure to place the bed first, cause uh, that, that'll block it. Now on the shooting floor you wanna add frames in these positions. 
then close it up. Oh, and the garage door, that's for the minicopter. Pro tip, cover this gap with a rug to make pushing the minicopter in effortless. Okay, okay, it's not the silky smoothest, but let's see you try it without the rug. Yeah? Then you'll learn the true meaning of suffering. Perfect, 10 out of 10 Kotaku. Finally, add these roof pieces, because they're the best. And that's the shooting floor done. In fact, that's the entire base done, minus one very cool optional feature. So let's get on that, shall we? Funnel wall compound. Actually extremely easy to make and quite cheap. Just go here and do this. Three stone foundations here. And add walls like so. Now if the gap under this wall is too large, just replace the foundation. Of course in this case it isn't, I, I just want to show. Now you go here, and this little compartment you want to close like so, with a wall hard side out and a door opening outwards. Now this triangle is pretty good for electrics, and you do get three of them, so that's good multiple redundancy. Lastly, here you add a foundation and wall, and the funnel wall compound is essentially done. Now it's just the final fix-ins. So, a siren light can also block movement here, useful for blocking around the door in the case of terrain-induced height mismatches and so on. If you see that people can push through somehow, just place one. Now, this compound has incredibly good turret coverage, but we would be missing out on the whole funnel wall fun if we didn't add uh, shotgun traps. Perfect, so even if you don't have turrets yet, the shotgun traps are pretty well positioned in terms of uh, invisibility and this is a death trap. Fun! So and about the turrets, I like doors. They open, they close, they're doors. But you could uh, double up on the bubble up with uh, chain links here. You can still use the window by the way. And that uh, kinda makes your turrets deathless. Well at least against bullets and arrows. And yes, the turrets can shoot through just fine. And now, to, to keep the riffraff out, we need barricades. And you will need a few of these, so it's an investment. Although for a solo, I can't think of why using wooden ones would be so bad. Eh, uh, you do you. The burning question, however, is how do you place this one and this one? So you do it like this. Strange, but true. Now for the rest of them, it's just standard barricade placement fare. And guess what? We're done. The throne. It won't cost you an arm and a leg. It's fast to build. It has pretty much every feature you might need and some that you won't. It's just about as tricksy as hobbits get. In short, it's my personal best as of now. And with that said, thank you so much for spending this time with me. And an even bigger thanks to the wonderful people who've donated and supported the channel. Now I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, goodbye for now, and blessed be.